Hey folks, thanks for joining me today. I wanted to take a quick second to do an introduction on this video to kind of explain what the premise of this track was supposed to be. I feel like an idiot because I've had this modular synth that I've been working on for at least a couple of years, curating it to what I, I want out of a modular system. And just last week was the first time that I actually did some sampling into the dig attack. I've had the dig attack for about three months and wish I had done this on day one because it's been amazing. There's just so much flexibility when you combine uh, those two devices, you know, super customizable modular synthesis with a sampler that is endless. So the intention of this piece was to take some pad drone like samples from my modular, put it in the dig attack and then use parameter locks and trig conditions to create a generative ambient type of piece. I still want to do that and I might even do it with the same samples that I use in this track but it ended up going in a completely different direction because I heard a bit of rhythm in the first pad that I put in and ended up adding an entire percussion section. You'll hear it. I talked through the whole thing in my thought process. But yeah, I really enjoyed the process of taking the samples from my modular. And it took maybe 15 minutes to get all the sounds into the dig attack once I kind of did the sound design component on the modular synth. And I might be interested in releasing some sample packs of, of modular pads and drones if, uh, if people are interested in that. So definitely let me know if that's something you might be interested in. Anyways, let's jump right into the tutorial. Okay, so let's get right into it. Um, first thing that we're gonna do is kind of just go through each raw sound. Um, so in, whenever I'm in pattern four, I'm going through the raw sounds and I'll show you the waveforms. So we'll start off with the modular synth samples kind of uh, along with how the track builds um, because I took those first three melody uh, or melodic components, the pads that come in from my modular I'm pointing because my modular is right above the frame, <laughs> above my dig attack. Um, so we'll get started there. Here is the bass synth sound, the kind of drone that everything starts off with. I'll, I won't play the whole waveform because it kind of just continues on, but it's uh, plats, mutable instruments plats, sampled into beads by mutable instruments it's uh the, the successor to clouds kind of like clouds 2.0 uh, that everyone had been waiting for forever and ever and it lived up to all the hype in my opinion um anyways um it is uh i can't remember which mode of plat it comes from i think it's the second red mode um i'll try to remember to put the name of that on the screen if i if i remember what mode that's called but <laughs> Yeah, basically it, um, I just kind of repeated it an octave down. And my initial intention with this track was to have it be a kind of a generative ambient piece to have all of these droney pads kind of starting and stopping at different points and, and parameter locking and, um, randomizing some of the, like the, the start points and end points and which direction they were playing in, um, but I ended up programming this first and it just had this kind of like droney march to it. And I ended up programming a beat over it because I couldn't resist. But anyways, so you can see in the pattern, I am um, with the LFO, I'm adjusting the sample start time at a random level. Um, so it skips around and you get these tonal differences in the bass drone. And sometimes it will start way at the end and it'll basically skip the note. So it, it's kind of cool because it would randomly drop out at points. Anyways, um, uh, what comes in next? Oh, oh my gosh, this is... This is my favorite part about the whole piece, the kind of uh, ambient, ethereal, granular sound that plays across a stereo field. So this came from, also from Platts. Um, actually, sorry, no, this came from a guitar sample that I took from my looper, recorded into Make Noise Morphogene, and put that through beads into, sampled that into the mod modular. And I'm going to play you the whole sample, the whole waveform, so you can hear what that sounds like. I 
I put it through my, my modular filter, my filter module too, which is um, it's called Three Sisters by Mannequins. So yeah, that is a very screwed up guitar sample, screwed up via Morphogene, and then screwed up further on the Digitact in our pattern. And with this sample, I am modulating the level. So it's it's that kind of like fake side chaining trick that I've talked about where basically every downbeat, it, it drops it down um, just to kind of create some more space because it's like a pad sound. So I wanted it to duck out of the, the way of the kick drum. I put a filter on it so you can hear those two components. And then I modulated the heck out of the panning, the delay, the reverb. I did a ton of parameter locking, as you can see, all throughout the entire pattern, mostly parameter locking the sample start time. And what this does is it creates, um, it creates a melody out of the pad. And uh, parts of uh, some, some of the notes are reversed, some of them are played forward, but when I made it, I kind of just randomly parameter locked the start point until I found a melody that I liked. And it sounds like this. So you can see it jumping around, playing uh, reverse, playing forwards, but it's it's only a few notes, you know, only a few steps are put in there. And then of course, with the drone, oops. There it is. So yeah, that's, um, that's kind of like the premise. That's how the piece started. And I was super, super excited about that. Um, the next sample, yep, I'm in pattern four. So the next sample is on track seven. It's much simpler. Um, it's just a super long drone. But I was modulating some of like the tamper control, like the tamper control and the morph control on plats as it was running through beats. And this is through beads, uh, scorched tape mode. So it's super lo-fi, super gritty. And this is the pair of classic waveforms, which is the first green mode in Platts. Um, so yeah, it's kind of just a gritty pad. And in the pattern, I put a high pass filter on it. Yeah, a high pass filter. Overdrive. And I parameter locked the start point. So again, you can watch as the, the sample plays, you can watch it dart around the waveform. If I let you hear the track. And it kind of just acts as some support for the bass drone. And there that, the bass drone dropped out, like I mentioned it does sometimes. So yeah, this, this uh, sort of supplemental part adds some, some color to the bass add some fluff. One of those things you don't necessarily notice unless you point it out because it kind of just melts together with that part. So then all together, those melodic components sound like this. Yeah, I was, again, just super, super stoked when all that started to come together. Um, okay, so let's go through, actually, you know what, I'll take you through, um, I'll take you to the, the other sample that I used for the melody when that second pattern kicks in. 
so that flute melody, this is the original sample. It's from one of the blank forms, tape haze packs, either three or four. As I've mentioned before, I'm a huge proponent of those sample packs. They really started to inspire um, a lot of the stuff I've been doing with the Dig Attack. So shout out to Blank Forms. Go check out those sample packs if you haven't yet. They're fantastic and worth every penny. Um, at least for me, I've gotten so much money's worth out of them. So, um, yep, pretty hazy, scratchy, gritty flute sample. I don't even know if it's an actual flute, but I put a filter on it. And I do my fake side chaining thing there. And play it up an octave or two. And I noticed today when I was thinking about um, making this video, I was just like thinking about some of the parts in my head and realized that that melody is very similar to the Doug theme song from the show Doug from the 90s. If you're into that, I don't know if I'm dating myself. But it's a great cartoon. Lots of important life lessons learned from that show when I was a toddler. I don't even remember how old I was. A preteen, at least, <laughs> at the oldest. I was probably in middle school, elementary school, when that show was was big. So anyways, let's uh, let's listen to all those things together. Okay, and this this flute part doesn't come in until after I change to pattern two, and then it kind of comes back into pattern one and has that very like filtered sound. So this is what it sounds like when it initially comes in. way more present, right? Um, okay, so let us switch to percussion. Pattern four, which is my raw samples. Um, always get the kick on one. Um, my go-to bass sample, as I've mentioned, is BD2 puff. It's a stock sound, it's perfect. I do the same thing to it every time. I roll off some of the high end, I put a tiny bit of resonance on it, and I I bring the attack, or sorry, yeah, the, uh, the decay. I move the decay down, uh, but I switch it per note. So sometimes like the longer notes will be like. Okay, what am I doing? Oh my gosh, I'm an idiot. I'm on my filter, <laughs> my filter envelope, not my amp envelope. Um, it's been a long week. So sorry for any confusion there, but under the amplitude envelope, I will bring the decay down. And I'll modulate it. So I will show you what that looks like. So you wanna have the decay a bit longer on some of the downbeats and shorten it up to give you some of that kicky low end essence, but have it not be as boomy when you're just putting in filler notes. So that's something that I always tend to do that has, has worked out well for me. So yeah, pretty standard kick part. Um, all right. Other percussion samples. Let's see what I used. Yep, this is from Blank Forms Tape Days 4. And it looks like I really did not edit it that much at all. Some accent notes where I just shortened the sample length. That's pretty much it. So that's the kick and the snare. And then I'm gonna skip three for now and go to my cymbal sound, my hi-hat sound on step four. This is the raw sample also from Blank Forms Tape Haze 4. 
And what I did is modulate the sample start time super, super slightly, like not even, yeah, like barely above one. And that in combination with some reverb, some panning and cutting the start length a bit. So it's starting kind of in the middle. Oops. You can see how that varies. It's not playing from the same point every single time. And it just gives it a very natural feel. In terms of humanizing that every hit isn't going to be the same, it, it's not a natural sound in terms of something that you'd get from a, an, an acoustic drum kit, but it has a natural groove to it, which I like. Okay, and then sample three is kind of an auxiliary snare sound that I made. I made this, um, gosh, how did I make this? I, you know, I thought this was actually, I literally just named the sample rocks r-o-c-s i can't remember what i did i must have been like rubbing some rocks together underwater like i have a, a bamboo plant that has rocks and i have to wash them out and maybe i recorded that i honestly can't remember but anyways you can hear certain parts of it this is the edited sample. And you can hear the part right there that made it into that cut. And I did some parameter locking. To get some more standard, like little tiny, quiet, soft rim shots. And that's what the rhythm section sounds like all together. I could listen to this for hours by itself. So, you know, you have that and then you have this. Actually, you know what? Let's go to pattern two because pattern one is where the buildup happens. But pattern two, everything is kind of spelled out fully. Oh, and here what I did is I created another hi-hat part by taking my snare, which normally sounds like that. And on some of the steps, I just, you know, up to the pitch so you can see, or sorry, I didn't even really change the pitch. I did it with the filter. So I put a high pass on it and then I just made the actual sample length super short. So, Kind of a fake hi-hat and 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 all on the ends just to kind of build that transition from pattern one to pattern two anyways so there's your percussion section and here's the melodic section <laughs> perfectly well but when you put them together it's just so i don't know it's different uh when i kind of made the groove on top of the, the ambient part i was like this really struck a chord with me i was super excited with how it turned out and then for the third pattern, I basically just um, changed up the bass line and the, sorry, and the melody, which I will show you the transition to and from now. So this is pattern two.
changed that the pattern of the hi-hat too which i will play for you with the snare and the additional hi-hat that i created with the snare to kind of slow it down to half time versus what it sounds like in pattern two turns to and I also uh, change the kick pattern to a more of a four on the floor a four on the floor kick pattern which is varied from the the groovier pattern that it transitions from so all together you get the effect of kind of a climactic like melodic climb in in combination with the percussive section kind of like taking a back seat and uh and that groove slows down so it sounds like this Yeah, that's the essence of the piece. Really what happened is I made those three sounds. I made the three melodic components that came from my modular. And then from there, I added a kick drum, a snare, a hi-hat, and some more textural percussion. And I didn't want a melody yet because I knew I wanted that first pattern to be a build up, right? And then I knew I wanted it to kind of like explode and really open up in the second pattern. And yeah, it just, uh, I think it works so well. Um, and then from there, I wanted to do like an AABA -A -A type of thing. So I do two run throughs of that pattern and then I change the melody and, you know, alter the rhythm section a bit for the, the B. And then it goes back into the main pattern. And then it returns to a subdued pattern one. So like, I'll show you what I do uh, when I like transition between patterns. So I'll have the pattern playing. I'll select pattern two. And then I know I want to bring in a certain track and cut out others. So I just do this. And then let's pretend the whole cycle has happened and it goes back to one. And it's kind of subdued and chill. And you can kind of play around to build it back up to full speed. And you have that nice little track aid melody, a little flute hanging in the background, and then you bring it all back. and then just play around with bringing the other tracks in and out as it fades away. So yeah, that's that. Thanks for hanging out. I'll catch you next time.